another cursed mashup. Here we go. Y'all issued me another songwriting challenge. How could I resist metal, country, the perfect fusion, but I had to put a twist on it, didn't I? Couldn't just be metal. We couldn't just have any old metal. That's been done before. I had to do 2014 era gent and 2014 style bro country. The most unholy of mashups. I mean, just look at this. Even just this for the thumbnail is enough of an unholy mashup for me to go, oh yeah, oh, we gotta do that. But how could I put something like this together? You can't just slapdash, throw some crap together. But I've got all the tools, I've done all my research, and today I'm gonna show you how I did it. The first and most important thing that I needed were a bunch of really dumb costumes, some of which I already had just lying around, some of which took a little bit more dedication, like getting my ears pierced and gauged just for this video. Never again will you question my dedication to my craft. All right, fine, they're magnets. I got them from Amazon. Still, they were like, at least $10. Like, what am I gonna use them again, you know? I'm gonna leave them on for the rest of the video just to get my money's worth. And like, they kinda look good. And of course, I was gonna need an eight string for that. And of course, we're gonna need ourselves a telly. And then we're gonna need the unholy trinity of songwriting tools. Easy Mix, Easy Bass, and Easy Drummer 3. I couldn't have done any of it without today's sponsor who is Tune Track from Metal Month 2022. But enough yakking, let's get cracking. So I started off the song with the most bro country thing I could possibly summon from my body. <laughs> I just wanted something that sounded like it was straight out of a Florida Georgia line song right before everything goes off the rails. Let's take a look at what's going on in here. First of all, I'm using the Country Guitars Easy Mix Pack, and this was very important because although I've already got tons and tons of sounds for heavy music and definitely for gent, I didn't know what to do with country guitar sounds. I don't have like a nice, I don't know, I guess a Fender Princeton Reverb is probably the kind of amp that I would, I don't have one of those just lying around. So Easy Mix is a godsend in this case. Here is the clean spring preset that I used. And I just doubled it up an octave. Just over some like real basic chords. So I recorded two different acoustic guitar parts. One of them with a capo on the second fret. And then another one, capo to, I think on the fifth or seventh, different inversions so that they're higher up and that really fills it out. It's almost like a poor man's 12 string guitar. I've got this pedal steel slide guitar thing. That's a VST. And then about halfway through, in comes the banjo. I programmed that. I honestly don't know if that's something that a real banjo player would play. I have no idea. I actually have two completely separate easy bass tracks because I wanted one that was full on country and then one that was very heavy. This is the easy bass core library vintage one. Country bass is real simple, but just very effective and powerful. And then right here is where the party really starts. Banjo going. Let's get this party moving. If you speak heavy music, then you know that a lo-fi eight string guitar riff means that you're about to die. The guitar tone that I'm using for the heavy sound is one of my favorite. It's this Keith conquering sound. And then in order to make it lo-fi, I'm using this vocal telephone effect from the Chuck Ainley pack. Really does the trick to let you know that death is not. But it is a teeny tiny bit of a fake out because instead we're taking it to church. What I really wanted for this song as much as possible was for it to be the chocolate in the peanut butter, the peanut butter in the chocolate all the time. Not just like country, gent, country, gent, country, gent, back and forth like that. I think I was like, 
70% successful. So to do that right here, I layered the telly on top of the eight string playing sort of a hilariously mayonnaise version of the same riff with just like no syncopation at all. <laughs> Those off time hand claps absolutely do it for me. I don't know why. Hand claps courtesy of Easy Drummer 3. Getting the party moving. The lyrics are absolute bro country nonsense. It's just like a weird combination of vague relationship stuff, partying of various kinds, stuff about trucks. I, I, I don't really know. I had to raise my tolerance for cringe like 10 levels to write this song. I really hope you appreciate it. And then what happens next in the song was quite a shock to the country folk. I actually wrote the lyrics to this part first and then wrote the guitar part and the drums to match. This part is absolute gent lyrical nonsense. Just some shit about science things, space, shapes, molecules. It doesn't make any sense. Please do not try to read into any of these lyrics. You will be sorely disappointed. They're all garbage. For one of the guitar parts, I layered in some random, and when I say random, I improvised these and left it. Some random minor seconds. I don't know how to play it. I didn't even, I didn't play this part because I just dropped him in. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cool. Sounds, sounds like the real deal. And then they're kind of starting to warm up to each other. You know what I mean? They're starting, they're going to play something together. Right here, everybody sort of joins in together. <laughs> I think this is one of the parts where the mashup sounds the most mashed. I'm very proud of this. Everything working together. This to me could be its own genre. Maybe I created a monster. Pretty much all of the guitar parts in this song are based around this same basic riff, but there's just a bunch of different variations on it. This one, I was basically like, I have to have some kind of polymeter thing in here, otherwise it's not gent. And of course we gotta have some little ambient lead guitar things in here. Uh, I'm not gonna try and play this because I don't remember how I did it. But those are on the telly. You know, it's too bad that everybody and their grandma started doing that because this is one of the coolest things that came out of that whole era of prog metal. And then my best attempt at a country guitar solo over some genty rhythm. <laughs> Not bad for having never played a country guitar solo in my life. I leaned very, very heavily on this kind of pedal steel style bend. An oblique bend where one note stays the same. And you bend the other note. I did three of those total. And then you pick really close to the bridge to get it twangy. This sound is also from the Country Guitars pack. This is called Taped OD Delay. Then we come to the second verse, and right here we've got a combination of big ambient chord washes, and then the riff again in yet a different kind of a style. And then the vocals here are for the most part the same melody as the first verse, but now with new lyrics, a new take on the same idea. Now this part is vocally identical to the screaming part, except instead of screaming, he's just singing like two notes. I say he. All of the vocals on this are me, obviously. <laughs> 
You remember those dissonant minor second things that I improvised for the first version of this? I sort of worked out a version of them for this part. I really like the bass line for this part. At this point in the song, everything's so off the rails. Like, that's not a thing that you would hear in bro country for sure. But now it's kind of like, I don't know, man. We're just trying some shit. I like this bit because it's the country guy singing over the gent part. And for some reason, that is both hilarious and very cool to me. And he's singing the gent lyrics. What is it that actually makes something country or sound Southern? It's kind of just a Southern accent. Like there are some things like having a twangy telly guitar and slide guitar and stuff like that. But like, if you don't have those things, but you just sing with like a really obvious Southern accent, people are gonna be like, oh yeah, country. This next part, is the part that I think sounds the coolest. Once again, I think I did a really good job of mashing the elements together, but also these parts are just really pretty. All I really did was sort of arpeggiate the chords that are implied here. We got B minor, and then D major with a little, and then an A. Send it off. And that together with some simple banjo chords. And then another electric guitar on top of that. Plus the heavy ones. and some big ass vocal harmonies. Little bit of the old misery. I don't know why I didn't think of this, but maybe the girl in the story's name is misery. Wow. And then the inevitable breakdown. But with the little dual guitar twang thing. And then I just did the same thing an octave down on the eighth string. There is actually precedence for this in country music. Country guitar players would sometimes use baritone guitars. Thematic continuity is extremely important in songwriting, even in something as silly as this. So in order to keep it real consistent, I wanted to bring back the intro melody. And here during the breakdown, I did that, but halftime with this sort of twangy guitar. The, I call it the lonely cowboy sound. Then I added a couple more cheesy pedal steel types of licks. Fuck it. And then right here, the party just goes absolutely off the handle. I literally put a note in Pro Tools. It just says party. Once again, we've got the melody for the intro, but now it's full time again instead of half time. <laughs> the way that you really know that it's party time in the song is with the tambourine. Once again, got the easy drummer tambourine. It's the most important instrument on earth. I can get on board and then of course I had to magically modulate us down to E so that I could do that. for no other reason than to bring the riff back, but lower. We of course have to have the obligatory gent siren thing, but just this time I played it on a telly instead. <laughs> this sound is just the Marco epic lead sound from the jam track amps pack. And that's going into this shimmer hall reverb sound from the rock preset pack. 
It's absolute musical nonsense, but it does the thing. For the heavy bass on this song, I wanted a ton of slap bass, right? Gent is like Seinfeld plus heavy metal, so you gotta have slap bass. Normally, programming slap bass or playing it is a complete pain in the ass. Luckily, we've got easy bass and it is so, so easy to do. Pretty much all you have to do is drop these little like key switch notes under the notes that you want to be slapped or plucked and it just does it. Easy as advertised. Let's talk about the drum parts for this song. I discovered in my research that unsurprisingly country drum grooves are, aren't really all that complicated. Honestly, I think most of it is stuff that I could probably play, maybe not all that well, but all that to say that there's not a whole hell of a lot going on. But nonetheless, I did use the Country Grooves pack. Technical drumming is not the focus of country music, but it was still really nice just to have something a little bit more groovy than me just locking some really bland uh, part to the grid. This whole song is an amazing example of why having these kinds of tools around is so crucial. I don't just like have a drummer at my beck and call to be able to do all these different styles all the time and record themselves. And even if I did, I wouldn't bother them to make something this stupid. Yo, Bruno, how's it going? I was wondering if you wanted to play drums on my Gent Country mashup. Hello? Hello? The Gent grooves would have taken me a lifetime. It would have made this whole thing no fun, really. But instead what I was able to do is use this drum riffs pack, which is literally Matt Halpern grooves. And they all sounded exactly like what I wanted. and then just grab some of these grooves and modify them for my purposes. Mostly what I did was move the kick drums around and then change up a bunch of the fills and stuff. And then also like add accent symbols and stuff to match up with the parts that I'd written. But like, just not having to program ghost notes. Oh my God, that shit takes forever. Why would I do it when Matt Halpern can do it for me? The video that I put out before the Gent Country mashup one was about creating unique grooves from scratch and being able to do that is also incredibly important. Stock grooves aren't always gonna work and also they don't necessarily have the personality that you can put into your own drum parts. But also this is such an unbelievable time saver. I am incredibly grateful that this exists. I think that this mashup worked surprisingly well. Even though I cringed quite a bit while I was making it and you probably cringed a bit listening to it and watching the video, I really like it. I think it is very catchy and fun. And honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. I love doing songwriting challenges like this because it gives me an opportunity to explore making a genre that I wouldn't otherwise normally do, and I learn a lot. It's really fun to try different things and see if I can do it. I just plain love writing songs, even if it's a style that I don't really like or listen to in general. And as terrible as all of the bro country is that I listen to while researching this, uh, some of it is pretty cool, and I did learn a lot about a certain style of songwriting. There's a reason that that stuff is as popular as it is, and there's something to be learned from every single song that you hear. If you wanna learn more about writing songs, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my course. It's called Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting, and I don't cover anything about country in it at all, and you can find out more about that at the link in the description below. Huge thanks to TuneTrack for sponsoring this video and for providing me with the tools that I desperately need to do my job, even when it's something as stupid as this. There's links to everything that I used in this video in the description below. There is still one Metal Month video left and I'll see you when it drops next week.